Hi, Marty Dwyer with Boat Anchor Audio. Uh, a couple of days ago, we were fooling around at the lab here of a couple of audio generators we have, and we were wondering if there's some way to reduce the total harmonic distortion of these uh, generators. Uh, of course, there is. It's a very simple way to do it. It just involves what is essentially a low, or rather a, a bandpass filter that has a, an acceptably high Q and at the same time is very stable. Uh, we made a few modifications to it. It's nothing fancy. But what we did find after doing some extensive tests that we can reduce the total harmonic distortion of even a quality audio generator, quality function generator, by anywhere from 18 to 20 dB, and a not-so-quality generator, the same thing. We can reduce the total harmonic distortion probably from 18 to 22 dB on a uh, not state-of-the-art audio generator. So let's take a look and see what happened here. All right, here we have a picture of the THD filter. We'll run through it very quickly just to give you the high points. And we'll take a look at the schematic and give a detailed idea of what's going on. And we'll show you some test results from two different audio generators and how this filter can improve the THD. Up here we have the power switch. These are two range switches that control the range of the frequencies in here. Now there are six different frequencies that are controlled by this rotary switch. Uh, the frequencies are 33 cycles, 100 cycles, 1KC, 5 10 and 20 kc now they have four capacitors here now these capacitors are vitally important they have to be high quality capacitors because they control the frequencies along with these resistors which also control the frequency so the capacitors and the resistors have to be very high quality resistors high quality capacitors to get this to work properly this is merely a rail splitter up here uh, we have this operating from a single-ended power supply, power source. But the, uh, the TL074 chip, which is what we are using, appears to work better with using a split rail supply. At least it always has for me in the past. So what we have up here is a simple rail splitter. The current draw on the chip is very low. The current draw does not fluctuate that much, and the voltage is pretty stable. It's not going to cause a problem there. All right, what do we have here? As mentioned, this, is, this rotary switch is a six-position switch, and it controls your six different frequencies here. Uh, this is your power, your, uh, your DC input. I have it marked down as being 18 volts. It actually runs anywhere from 15 to, say, 24 volts with no problem. Uh, the center pin is positive. We have that marked. We have an RCA connector here. This is the input from the generator. In other words, to say the same thing using different words, the output of the generator goes into the input of the filter. This is the output of the filter with the reduced THD. Now we have something down here called meter. Now that I'll get to a little bit later in detail, but that is for connecting an audio voltmeter or an oscilloscope to the output so you can monitor the output, uh, voltage-wise that is. Uh, this is merely a gain control. Uh, most of the testing we've done with this is an output of the generator of one half volt, and that can be raised or lowered depending on how the gain is setting. Now, one thing we had a little discussion about is should we put a variable Q uh, potentiometer in here? Uh, at one time we had it set up so we could put another pot right here and control the Q we found that was more trouble than it was worth. Uh, sometimes it gets misadjusted and it, it, it starts to oscillate. We decided to leave that out and pick out a resistor, a fixed resistor, that will give us the optimum Q. We want the best stability as well as the highest Q. We don't want this oscillator to go off in the never, never land. All right, that's it in a nutshell here. All right, now we'll take a look at the uh, schematic diagram and some test results. All right, here's a picture or a drawing of the schematic. As mentioned previously, the chip that we're using is the TL074. Uh, we're only using, th it's a four op amp chip, as most of you probably know. We're only using three op amps. One is left over here, it's uncommitted. It can be used as a buffer, it could be used as an amplifier. 
it does have to be terminated properly if it's not being used. Uh, you don't want it causing a problem there. Uh, but essentially, there there is the rotary switch. It's one section or one pole of the rotary switch that controls the frequencies. This is the other pole of the switch. The frequency determining resistors, the frequency re determining capacitors, C2, C4, C1, C3, as mentioned previously. These capacitors here have to be very high quality since they do control the frequency. Uh, this is the power section down here. Uh, jack, you can use a single-ended supply. We have a rail splitter built in here. Uh, we're feeding the chip itself, but they split voltage, uh, plus or minus whatever you're putting in there. If you're putting in, say, 20 volts, it's going to be plus or minus 10 volts, uh, minus maybe a half a volt drop over the uh, polarity protection diodes. And this would be the output right here. That, is, that goes to the unit under test. Yep, normally you would have a jumper there unless, of course, you wanted to use this op amp as a buffer or as an amplifier. You could just stick it right in there in series. But normally you would have a jumper there. This is for connecting an audio meter or a scope on the output to monitor what's coming out of the filter. Uh, these frequencies, by the way, are nominal frequencies. They're not exact. Say uh, you want to test one kilocycle. Uh, the frequency of the filter is not going to be exactly one kilocycle due to primarily straight capacitance. It's going to be very close, probably within 10 or 15 cycles. But in any event, the way you would use this is to connect a signal generator here, connect an audio meter here, an audio voltmeter here, or a scope here, and just adjust the, uh, the audio generator for maximum peak, for maximum deflection on your meter or your scope. That way you know that the audio generator is tuned to the exact frequency of the filter. Uh, we had a prototype made where you can adjust the frequency continuously variable adjustment of the frequency and uh, it worked well but it was a pain in the neck to use the, this is much easier where you have fixed frequencies six six fixed frequencies should be plenty anywhere from uh, say 33 cycles to 20 kc it should be plenty to get to uh, get the job done so that's the schematic in a nutshell it's nothing more than a, a bandpass filter there's nothing fancy about it it's been modified a little bit but uh at the end of the day, it's nothing more than a bandpass filter. <clears throat> Here's a spreadsheet we made up showing the results using the filter and not using the filter with two generators. First generator we tested is a BK Precision 4017A. Uh, this guy's been around the track. I bought it new in 2004, so it's 20 years old. Uh, all these tests are conducted with a signal into the, uh, the filter of half a volt. In other words, the output of both generators is a half a volt into the filter. Now, it doesn't give a specification for the B and K precision as far as total harmonic distortion goes. All they say is distortion, and the spec for distortion is less than 3%. Now, let's take a look at 1KC. We tested it at 1KC, Without the filter, the total harmonic distortion was minus 42.1. With the filter, the total harmonic distortion drops down to 64.1. That's a 20 dB or 22 dB improvement. That's not bad at all. I won't give the THD plus N numbers, but they correspond with the THD as would be expected. Uh, going up here to 20 KC, we have a uh, without the filter. The total harmonic distortion is minus 47.9. With the filter, it drops down to minus 66.4. Pretty good improvement there. Let's take a look at the Rigel. The Rigel we have here is a 1022Z. Again, the test voltage is 0 0.05 volts into the filter. The spec for the Rigel, they give it in a percentage rather than dB, but the spec for the Rigel, as far as total harmonic distortion goes, is 0.075%. Now that's pretty good. That corresponds, by the way, to minus 62.5. Uh, I measure uh, dBs rather than percentage. So let's take a look at 1KC. With no filter, the total harmonic distortion is minus 72.2. 
which is quite an improvement on their specs. So their specs are very, very conservative. The result I get is considerably better than their specifications. Anyway, uh, it's minus 72.2. With the filter, the total harmonic distortion drops down to 89.8. Let's take a look at 20KC. With the, uh, without the filter, total harmonic distortion is minus 73.3. With the filter, the total harmonic distortion drops down to 94.6. So this shows two things. One, with a function generator and audio oscillator, that's really not state of the art. You get quite an improvement here. And even to, even with a quality state of the art function generator, you still get a worthwhile improvement. Uh, up here at 10KC, for example, it's, uh, it's what, over a uh, little over 20, uh, 20 dB, so that's not bad at all. Uh, 1KC, it's, uh, what, 17 dB. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good test. Oh, oh, by the way, with all these tests, all these tests were done with a Quant Asylum QA403 audio analyzer. Okay, there you have it. There's a very simple way to reduce the total harmonic distortion out of a uh, audio generator that may not be world class, and even to reduce the total harmonic distortion out of a pretty good audio generator, usually anywhere from an improvement of from anywhere from 18 to 22 dB. So that's that's not too shabby. Uh, it's very inexpensive to build one of these. Uh, the only thing you have to watch out for is you have to have high quality frequency determining capacitors. Uh, there's four of them in there. They have to be NPOs or better. Uh, the resistors, of course, have to be at least 1%. And as mentioned previously, you're not going to get the frequencies exactly on, primarily due to straight capacitance, which is pretty difficult to uh, predict. So, uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you have any questions, just leave it down in the comments. Talk to you later.